big shout out to him as an artist because I feel like most artists don't do this, especially after they drop a bit of a dub, dud of an album. And that is Jack Harlow. Jack Harlow put out this album, Jack Man, last week, which is a surprise drop. Um, and it came quite soon after his other album, which I think was something about like, um, hurry up the kids miss you or something, right? It was, it was the album that had the Drake single on it. Um, but the album overall was all, was horrible, 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 right? Um, and didn't really, I think, showcase his talents. But instead of doing what most artists do when they drop a dud and everybody, you know, resoundingly kind of agrees, even diehard Jack Harlow fans and critics and stuff and people online just say the album's not good. Usually people in this era, especially how sensitive people are, especially how sensitive artists are online, they get on Twitter, they get on social media and start crying. They start blocking people. They start refusing to do interviews. They go here, they go there, they speak this, they speak that. Or they just try and convince everybody that what they're, think, what they're thinking and what they're hearing, what they're saying is gas. Instead, what Jack Harlow did, he essentially went away, got somewhat buff, it looks like, right? Because I think he quit um, drinking, he quit doing drugs, he doesn't smoke anymore. He got straight into the flipping studio and he went in and just recorded more music because I guess deep down he knew and he believed in himself enough to know that hey I know I did a dud I know that album wasn't great but I know how great I can be and he's always had this crazy ambition anyway he's always spoke about it it's quite openly in interviews which I kind of like and I appreciate that he's kind of honest and upfront about it I'm still a bit of a purist in that respect I like the artists who just create for the sake of creating I'm not really into the whole oh hip-hop is a competitive sport narrative but I do you know understand that that is a fundamental element of it from this you know from the birth of hip-hop it's always been somewhat competitive so I understand why some artists when they come up they want the accolades they want the recognition and they're actually gunning for the top spot. So Jack Harlow feels like the one kid within that younger generation who's saying, hey, I want to be the big guy. I want to be one of the big guys. I want to be one of the big dogs. I want to be one of the ones up and coming next after the generation of the Kendrick Drakes and J. Coles. He wants to be the next guy up in that generation. So he's going for it. And when you're going for it, you just have to deliver more often than not you're only as good as your last project no one cares so i i like that he's taking that approach even though he had a reason and he had every reason every right to stand by that project that he did before where they had a drake single on it and argue for it and whatever it may be and convince people what they're hearing was wasn't what they were hearing he didn't do that he went in the studio locked himself in and writ some of the most introspective music he's probably ever written i'm sure most jack harlow fans have probably heard this side of him before i'm sure if you dig deep into the vaults you can find this from him but as a somewhat casual jack harlow fan i thought it was incredibly refreshing to hear him speak on the topics he was speaking about on this 10 track album right in in terms of his place in hip-hop overall being a white dude in terms of you know how people act overall um boys in general when some one of their friends ends up you know it gets revealed later on down the line a childhood friend of theirs is a you know rapist or a predator or a creep or whatever it may be and you know the the kind of the mind fuck that happens in terms of having to deal with that in real time relationships his personality emotional like spiritual all of that is kind of covered on this album and i feel like to do this so soon after that last project in in a way was him kind of admitting or maybe agreeing with people yeah the last one was a dud which is kind of a bit of a hard one to take if you're an artist to admit that you put in all that effort for a project you put it out it wasn't received well and you agree that it wasn't received well and you go back to drawing board you kind of admit it's a failure but he did it anyway and which proves, you know, he's able to kind of put his ego to one side. And I feel like the way it's done in terms of it being a 10 track album, no features, and it's just him straight rapping on it. Straight rapping. The production's really good. Um, and I feel like it kind of flows really well. He kind of showcases a lot of his kind of rapping ability way more on this one than he did maybe on previous projects, which is a good reminder for most people. The only thing I'd say is a maybe slight kind of critique he does mention on, on a couple of the tracks that he says, oh, I'm the next, I'm that the big, I, I want to be like the biggest white guy, rapper guy, right? I think after Eminem. So he's basically gunning for that spot. But obviously, you know, gunning for that spot, you have to talk about people like Mac Miller, RIP to the GOAT. And he's definitely gone too soon and his ceiling was super high. So I think if he's one of these young up and coming bucks who wants to be the next big, you know, rapper to kind of take the mantle from somebody like an Eminem, 
you have to come with something a little bit more than just straight rapping because I feel like the, the, the what separated I think Mac Miller from everybody let, let alone white rappers everybody in his kind of class was his range from being able to sing to rap the harmonize the melodies the hooks the choruses the productions like crazy the videos everything about it his personality overall just sick and um, you know it's a, it was a real tragedy that he kind of passed to be honest especially the way that he did so if Jack Harlow does want to be that main guy, he's going to have to add a bit more musicality to what he does, a bit more range. Because um, at the moment, even even his tonality when he raps, it's all kind of the same, if that makes sense. Maybe I'm nitpicking here. Um, and even if you really critique it a little bit deeper, you'd say even the structure, even maybe the structure, maybe the kind of way he raps, maybe, maybe it makes it sound like he's rapping the same thing again and again. But I think I would prefer to hear that range. But this is definitely a palate cleanser. I honestly think this is a palate cleanser and this is what you need to kind of get people to give you a chance in the next one. So I think the next project, he'll probably do something a bit more, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more adventurous. He definitely will do that next project. But I feel like this is the, this is a real good palate cleanser. I feel like if you didn't um, like the previous project or if you just weren't a fan of Jack Harlow, I feel like this is definitely a better project to kind of dip your toes in and give it a chance. So definitely, if you haven't checked it out, please do. I really enjoyed it. Like I said, 10, 10 tracks for me, especially given how my attention spans all over the place and the fact that people nowadays i feel like you know go too crazy with the amount of tracks they put on albums anyway just to stack them up for fucking streaming which is annoying and they really don't pay attention anymore to the you know to the listening experience for the fans or the listeners overall i feel like him putting together a 10 track album um with this amount of layers and complexity and you know just just interest and intrigue all over it was great um, short run time you can bang it out in one sitting with no skips and i really did enjoy it and i think the cover is really hard also to be honest you know what i mean him kind of laying himself bare um with his top off in you know in an alleyway somewhere nondescript place looking like a looking like a goon kind of stripping himself bare starting from scratch and also this is a good point to kind of start because he's clearly been working out he's clearly been dieting to some respects keeping himself off the flipping booze and the smokes and whatnot and living a somewhat clean life so this was a good sort of representation of it so i'm a fan of it i liked it i enjoy it and i can't wait to hear what he kind of has next in store coming forward but like i said i think if he does want to reach the heady heights of what mac miller did he's gonna just need to give me a little bit more musicality a little bit more range um to kind of make that a little bit more of an interesting conversation because i think now he's definitely a really good rapper in his own right he definitely can prove that he can put together a really coherent project for sure we've seen it for 10 albums so over 10 tracks on this 10 track album boom he's done it but i want to see a little bit more range if you want to take over from people like mac miller personally 